Hello there. Welcome to the Art of Fishing webinar presented by MindShift. In today's Express webinar, we will, talk about the fish, we will talk about fishing and what you can do about it. You probably have launched this webinar because you want to protect your organization or you've been the victim of a phishing attack. So I want to make good use of your time, so we'll keep moving. In case you are curious as to who is presenting, let me introduce myself. My name is Matt Lunzer, and that's my picture on the left. I recall taking this photo shortly after my wife gave birth to twins. I was so tired, drank so much coffee the day of this photo that I'm not sure if I'm smiling for the camera or if I'm just delirious. I am MindShift's Director of Information Security. In my role, I oversee MindShift's corporate security program, and I interface with all of our service teams to help deliver you the most secure solutions possible. I've been with the company over 10 years, hold the degree in Information and Technology Management, and beneath that is some alphabet soup for those interested in certifications. But enough about me. Here's the agenda for today. First, we will introduce the art of war and transition into what is fishing and why it's so successful. Next, we will review a real phishing email and pivot into how to prepare and defend against it. Consider this things to do now. Lastly, we will move into advanced security measures, things that you may not be doing now but should consider, and we'll talk a little bit about MindShift. So let's start here. The Art of War is an ancient Chinese military literature attributed to Sun Tzu, a high-ranking military general, strategist, and tactician. The text is composed of 13 chapters, each of which is devoted to one aspect of warfare. The Art of War is commonly thought of as a definitive work on military strategy and tactics and is highly regarded today. The purpose of applying Sun Tzu's The Art of War to Fishing is to better understand the adversary with the intent to protect and defend your organization against phishing attacks. So as the cliche goes, for more information, Google it. So what is phishing? For an understanding, let's start with Sun Tzu's quote, all warfare is based on deception. Hmm, okay, is phishing deception? To answer that, one must first understand social engineering, as phishing is a form of social engineering. And I quote, social engineering is clever manipulation of the human being's tendency to trust. Said differently, it's human nature to trust. Unfortunately for us, we tend to trust the safety of the email that lands in our inbox. But as you will learn, or already know, the human being's natural tendency to trust is commonly exploited by the threat actors who seek to deceive us into believing the email we just received is legitimate, and that's how they get us. So back to what is phishing. By definition, phishing is the attempt to acquire, or should I say, say steal, sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and other information for malicious reasons. They do it by masquerading the trustworthy entity, often in the form of an email. It's all based on deception and exploitation of the human being's innate trust. So why is phishing so successful? As you have gleaned from the previous slide, the adversaries are attacking our weakest link, the human being. As I stated earlier, the enemy is deceiving us and relying on the fact we trust what is in our inbox. Further, they also exploit our habitual nature. And I quote, engage people with what they expect. It is what they are able to discern and confirms their projections. It settles them into predictable patterns of response, occupying their minds while you wait for that extraordinary moment that which they cannot anticipate. Isn't that an interesting quote by Sun Tzu? My interpretation is that when people see a link or an attachment in their email, their first instinct is to click it, and by then it's too late. The adversary is won. Here's some statistics to back up why phishing is so successful. 95% of all attacks on enterprise networks are the result of successful spear phishing which, by the way, is a targeted phishing attack that appears to be from an individual or business that you know, but it isn't. It's the bad guys. Further, email-based attacks accounted for 79% of social breaches in 2012. Lastly, 23% of recipients opened phishing messages and 11% click on the linked links or attachments. And I actually think that's low. I have personally performed mock phishing campaigns and have seen the average click rate at nearly 45%, or one out of every two employees. Phishing is that good. So further evidence as to why it's so successful. Here's a phishing example, courtesy of Wikipedia. Look at this for a minute, and does anything stand out to you, besides some of the highlights we put in the email? <laughs> First, the email is disguised as an official email. Recall the adversary is trying to deceive us. Secondly, notice the request involving money. Ultimately, money is often a motivating factor. Third, 
In the red boxes, note of the misspelling of the words received in discrepancy. It's not uncommon for these phishing attacks to originate from non-English speaking countries, and oftentimes that leads to poor spelling or grammar. Lastly, if you hover over the blue hyperlink, you would see that it is not going to TrustBank.com. Rather, it is going to another website that you do not recognize. The adversary assumes that you will not do that, and rather, using your trusting habitual nature, click the link and exploit, execute the exploit. So as you can see from this example, it's relatively well-crafted email. That's why it's success so successful. Most humans cannot easily discern a phishing email. So you may ask, what are some of the things I should do if I receive an email such as this? Beyond what I've already talked about, here are some things I suggest. In today's world, you can no longer trust the legitimacy of such email. Therefore, I suggest contacting the bank directly using a known good number not contained within the phishing email to contact them about it. Further, do not forward the email to friends or colleagues. You may inadvertently include them in on the tack. Next, if you must go to the website, manually type in the URL. Further, many phishing attacks, including spear phishing attacks that include wire transfer schemes, have obvious red flags such as misspellings. The bottom line is if you see anything out of the ordinary or your instincts make you question the email, delete it. The success of phishing has led to its use as a common attack. Here's a graph from the Verizon Beach Breach Investigations Report of 2015. As you can see from the data, phishing is a big mover. Just look at the difference from 2010 on the left side to 2014 on the right side. In 2010, it was nearly non-existent, but over the last five years, it has grown very consistently. Do not allow your firm to grow this statistic. Lastly, let's talk about ransomware. If you have seen this message before, you unfortunately know what I'm talking about. If you have not seen it before, consider yourself lucky. Ransomware, by definition, is commonly delivered via phishing. It encrypts your data and demands that you pay a ransom to the operators of the malware to get your data back. Here's how this scenario plays out. Someone in your staff receives an email, clicks the link, executes the malware, and your data is encrypted. What's worse is you must restore the data from backup or pay the ransom according to the instructions on the screen that you see before you. It's awful, common, and highly effective at evading detection by many common security tools. So what to do about all this? As Sun Tzu puts it, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Therefore, to prepare for and defend against fishing as to avoid falling victim, let's go through what we put together for you to do. Some phishing attacks, such as ransomware, mentioned in one of the previous slides, goes after data. Therefore, prepare yourself and do the following. Validate backups. Ensure that backups are being performed on a regular basis and are completing successfully. At MindShift, we have a dedicated team, that's right, a dedicated team that offers an electronic vaulting service that not only performs the backups, but monitors them to ensure they complete. Verify the frequency. This is more about your disaster recovery plan than phishing, but ensure your backup frequency aligns with your organization's recovery point objective. If you can afford to lose a day's worth of data, nightly backups are sufficient. If you cannot afford to lose that data, adjust your backup schedule accordingly. But be aware that can sometimes have a negative impact on your network and may increase costs. If you are so inclined, test that the restores work. On occasion, request that data be restored and verify the process works properly. When you have a disaster such as ransomware, that is not the time to find out that you are unable to recover in the manner in which your organization requires. Training. As quoted by Lance Spitzer, Training Director of the SANS Institute, one of the most effective ways you can minimize the phishing threat is through awareness and training. And yes, he actually hosts a training called Securing the Human. That really speaks to the problem that we have with one of our network's weakest links, the human being. So if you have not already, establish a security awareness program. Specifically, assign or ask for a volunteer with this initiative. The latter is an interesting strategy because it implies your volunteer has interest in training and therefore will take, make it a priority. If you do not have a program, utilize resources on the Internet to springboard your program. Simply search for security awareness training and you will find a plethora of resources and companies that offer security training both paid and for free. Lastly, Focus on social engineering, specifically phishing. It's a biggie. And given the focus of this webinar, how can I not promote that? But in all seriousness, 
Technology alone cannot secure your network. Training your employees about phishing is a critical defense measure. I know this, this is not directly related to phishing, but patching is such a critical control, I just have to mention it. Patch your system. It's stating the obvious, but let me expand a little. First, a disclaimer. I assume you have an effective patch management program in place. If not, get one ASAP. At minimum, you must start with your Windows host by installing all critical and security updates. But let's move beyond that. Beyond patching Windows, there are many common elements that require patching. These include Flash, which is notorious for vulnerabilities, Java, and many common third-party browsers such as Chrome and Firefox. If you are patching these elements, combined you are reducing the attack surface of the common PC and reducing the likelihood of that being exploited as a part of a phishing attack. If you operate IT in-house or use a third-party service provider, validate they are patching your hosts, and in particular, the common software components on a PC. MindShift, by the way, does all this for you. The traditional defense and depth tools are simply expected to be operating in all environments today and can still remain the difference between a successful or a failed phishing attempt. But the key to success with these tools is no longer whether you have them or not, but whether they are operating effectively. What I mean by that is, Ensure that all inbound and outbound email traverses your anti-spam filter. It's common for organizations only to scan, scan inbound mail. Validate that all hosts are running antivirus. Gone are the days where there should be any exclusions. Verify that both are configured according to best practices. And again, at MindShift we perform all this work on your behalf. These tools are developed by companies that focus on security. Although these tools have lost their excitement, make no mistake, they remain critical and being developed further all the time. So be sure to check with your anti-spam and antivirus vendors at least regularly to see if they have product updates that address phishing or the particular threat you are concerned about. You will be surprised that oftentimes they update their products with new security features but do not enable them for fear of introducing issues into your network. So let me explain with the first hand example. When we at MindShift learned of ransomware and how nasty it is, we held discussions with many, but one security vendor in particular we utilized to secure our customers and discovered through that conversation they released a new revision of their product that helps protect against ransomware. And of course, it was available but not turned on. So now, we offer it. For many firms, going beyond traditional defense and depth tools, such as the ones we just covered, is a requirement. Therefore, more companies are considering what I would describe as advanced security measures. For example, not relying solely on signature defense technologies such as antivirus and moving into more advanced tools that focus directly on phishing and other advanced threats via behavioral monitoring or threat intelligence. Also, considering the adoption of behavioral management tools that actually conduct mock phishing campaigns against your staff. These tools will provide you with detailed analysis and reports on what to do. And for those that fail the phishing campaign, you can automatically enroll them into security training. They'll just love that. The point being is to defend ourselves against phishing, we must consider going beyond the traditional security tools and consider advanced measures to subdue the enemy and avoid the fight. So in summary of this presentation, as the great Sun Tzu states, the greatest victory is which that requires no battle. Said differently, if you understand the adversary, their motive and means to attack you, you can institute mechanisms to avoid the battle. As we segue from the art of phishing, we will spend the final minute on who MindShift is. MindShift is a full service managed services provider that can be a one-stop shop for all of your IT needs, providing desktop, server support, cloud services with access to data centers across the country as well as professional services. We offer a broad range of services on a grow-as-you-go basis. We manage your infrastructure in your facility, or as many companies are now doing, moved into our cloud, allowing you to redirect capital investment into key strategic needs of the business and ensure business continuity in the event of a disaster. Lastly, with all solutions, we will assign a dedicated client advocate and a VCI to work with you to implement best practices, procedures, and long-term technology and budgetary recommendations to improve efficiency, uptime, security, and cost avoidance. Well, this is our last slide. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. We appreciate your time and hope that you found the information useful to you and your business. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. You can see our contact information on this slide or visit our website and click on Contact Us. You can also stay up to date on trending security topics by following us on our social media outlets such as Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I want to thank you again and I hope you have a wonderful day.